On Friday, we laid our Savior to rest. I wonder what we find today.
crushed it. It is crushed over here. Happy Easter to everybody. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to our worship service this morning. I'm so glad that you could be with us. Uh, welcome to another <laughs> coronavirus episode of worship. Um, and it's really different and really hard for something like Easter. Um, but the beauty of our faith is that um, it may feel like we are at Friday right now, to borrow um, the image from the great storytelling preacher Tony Campolo, um, but Sunday's coming. And this, as small as it can be, this celebration of the resurrection that we share together is a reminder that even in the darkness where we are as a people, as a world, Sunday's coming. We will be restored to the ways we were. God is still present with us. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, is still with us. So I'm so glad that you could be present for our worship service. Um, sorry for the technical delay, but we're still figuring this thing out. Um, and I'm so thankful to everybody who's come here to help. Um, I'm sure you noticed already that we had our lovely music that we normally have. Um, Kelly and Jan are here playing, and we're so thankful to um, bring some of the joy and celebration of um, our normal organ and piano music, and so we're so thankful um, that you're able to uh, be there with us. Uh, I'd also like a big thank you to Kayra Bryant and to Beth Julian for being our acolytes and our altar restorers, uh, and of course the biggest of shout outs to the man behind the camera, uh, Larry Bryant, who is... Uh, Currently and has for the last month been tirelessly working to help us um, still be able to connect and be long distances. Um, so I'm so excited for our worship service today. Um, at this point, we're going to transition into our call to worship. So the words should be on your screen, and if you can't see them, that's okay. When I say, but it's Sunday, I want you to say out loud to your screen so everyone in God can hear you. And Jesus lives again. All right, that is, and Jesus lives again. Let's practice one time. But it's Sunday. And Jesus lives again. Perfect. Now, friends, let's call ourselves to worship. On Friday, we laid our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to rest. But it's Sunday. And Jesus lives again. On Friday, we cried as we mourned the death of all of our hope. But it's Sunday. On Friday, the sky became dark, and we feared all that we had worked for was for nothing. But it's Sunday. And Jesus lives again. Sisters and brothers, Friday came and went, and our hope is in the Lord who makes alive the dead things and raises us to new life with our Savior Jesus Christ. It's Sunday. And, and Jesus, Jesus lives, lives again. again. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I want you to... Sing along with us, but I also want you to stand up. Get some movement uh, as you worship from your home. Stand with us as we sing hymn number 357, Christ Arose.
you pray with me as we say a prayer for our world on this Easter Sunday. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Grant us to die daily to sin, that we may live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Holy God of new life, we no longer look for the living among the dead. For our Jesus is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life with us. We pray for all those, especially who have been infected by COVID-19. All those who have lost friends and family members and those who work on the front lines to save lives. Strengthen all medical professionals and keep them safe. And strengthen us as your people to love and support them by doing our part. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with you, we share with Christ. Help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to sing again. We're going to sing, if you got a hymnal, 365, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let's sing together. So make sure that you are ready to comment in that chat. Uh, let us know uh, what you want to celebrate, what your joys are, what you are so excited about on this Easter. It's always good to look for the light, even in the darkness. So be prepared for that. Um, but right now, we are going to affirm our faith together by reciting uh, the Apostles' Creed. So let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, even across vast distances, the power of the Holy Spirit unites us and connects us in our love for and devotion to Jesus Christ. And that is worth celebrating, especially 
given the peace that Jesus Christ gives us all. So friends, I want to wish you that the peace of Christ be with you. And also be with you. And please share signs of peace with your friends and your family members there at home. Um, uh, so yeah, so now it's time for our Josiah box. So um, go ahead and throw in the comments um, whatever uh, things you want to celebrate, but I'm very excited that we have some wonderful people here, of course, and I know one person who wants to give a Josiah box, so come on up, Miss Beth. many things I'm thankful for. Today is Easter. God sent his only son to die for me. I am so blessed. And Jesus arose from the dead that we will all have eternal life. We are going to get through this. And thanks to you, we are getting through this in our church alone. I don't think we could survive without Paul's leadership at this time. So thank you, Paul. And last but not least, tomorrow, my husband and I will celebrate our 52nd anniversary. So there's lots of joy in the world. Among all this uncertainty, there's still joy and hope, and we're going to survive. And I will say that God's plans for this church are much bigger than me. And if I were not here, I have no doubt that this church would find a way. Um, the power of the Holy Spirit is strong. Um, go ahead and throw your uh, whatever you want to celebrate your Josiah boxes in the chat. I'm not sure if I'm getting everybody. Let's see. Oh, Elena Pittman. Her second wedding anniversary is tomorrow. I think that deserves a round. Any others? What else do we have? Larry, am I missing some? Anybody else pulling up and looking? I'm trying to up, update my uh, feed as quickly as possible. Um, so we'll give it a minute. Keep on commenting. Keep on letting us know. And even if we have to get to it after the fact, we will celebrate together. Yes, lots of happy anniversaries. Absolutely. Congratulations. Very excited for that. To both of the happy couples, Elena and Nick and Beth and Tom. We only have 50 years left. <laughs> yes, Beth said, Elena, you only have 50 years to go. So good luck. You're on your way there. Allie and Skyler are next weekend. Oh, my goodness. Allie and Skyler are next weekend. Yesterday, according to the Christian year, right? It was the day before Easter. So, well, I'm a Christian, so that's how I count time. Let's go. No, yes, uh, Allie and Skylar next weekend. Very happy anniversary. So thankful for all of these people. Please continue to put um, anything you got in the chat. We'll celebrate together. So good to see so many people checking in. Love all of you so much. Um, and what we'll do, how about this? Um, the next thing on our order of worship is the offering time. So uh, there's plenty of time. Keep throwing your celebrations in the chat. Um, but during this time now, if you're not doing that, um, we mention every week it's um, so very important for us that you continue to support the church financially, even while we can't be present with one another. Um, and we're so thankful that you have continued to do that in amazing ways. Um, but this time, I want to give you an opportunity during the worship service. We're going to have a normal, regular old offertory like we would. So I want you to go home, wherever you are in your home right now, and prepare your offering. Um, I am stealing this idea directly from my father. I have no shame in saying that. His church, they play an offertory every week. And uh, you use that time to prepare uh, your envelope so you can get ready to mail it off to the church. Um, so take some time to do that now. And I'm going to say, yes, yes. If you are uncomfortable um, 
mailing your check to the church. That is totally fine. We understand that. Um, please mail it to a friend in the church. You can bring it up here. Um, Beth Julian has volunteered her services, so if you'd like to mail uh, your check to Beth Julian, she'd be happy to take care of it. Um, uh, and if you have any issues, please reach out, call us, and we'll be happy to make something work. Call me or Beth or uh, Kayra or someone else, and we will, we will figure out a, a solution to that. Um, but we're just so thankful for your continued support. Um, so I'm going to play a little, a little song. Um, uh, take as much time as you need. Spend this time in prayer and reflection. And of course, continuing to celebrate our Josiah box in the chat. And go get your offering ready for this week. Because 
We're not going to leave all you kids watching at home out. Um, we will have a very special children's message uh, for Miss Kayra, so I'm going to turn it over to her. Good morning, everyone. I have asked the children to find something from their bedrooms or their home that reminded them of Easter and for them to share a part of our Easter story. So enjoy their Easter story with me. Listen to this video. Great job, kids. I enjoyed my time getting to drive by your house, keeping our safe distance, but still seeing your shining face. And remember, kids, give yourself a hug for the great job. This was our way of keeping them from hugging me. Again, great job. And I'm so proud that we got to share this with our church. Now, if you will join me in a time of prayer. Bow your heads, please. God, we come to you today to thank you for this great gift you have given this world in your son. A gift so undeserving, a gift that we can never repay. But we thank you for this forgiveness in this gift. Jesus brought us with his life. 
Father, in this time of fear, in the unknown, in the sickness, I ask that you lay your healing hands on all those who are sick and all those who are filled with fear. I pray that you place protective hands on our doctors, our nurses, our police, our fire departments, our leaders in our cities, our states, our country, and all over this nation. Watch over those who work in our stores, dear Father, those who bring our groceries and stock our stores so that we may have our daily needs. Help us to come to know you more, develop a deeper relation with you during this time. I pray for strength in you, a faith to trust you, and that you will take care of all of us. I pray for kindness in all our actions and words with each other. Dear Father, please bring your loving peace into our hearts, our minds, and our homes. Thank you for answering the question of why, because you love even me. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you, children. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for that, Kayra. Thank you, kids, for participating and making this so special, such a wonderful celebration of Easter. All right, friends, um, it's time for our scripture reading. I will be reading from uh, the story of the resurrection according to John, which will be in John chapter 20, if you would like to turn along with me in your Bible. Uh, I'll be reading John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. That's John 20, 1 through 18. Let us listen now for the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Hebrew Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, for the gift of your holy scripture, we give you thanks. We pray in this time that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this place and on all of the places where we are worshiping this morning. God, be near to us. Help us to feel your presence with us. Help us to have open minds, open hearts, and open eyes. Help us to see what it is you are showing us this morning. 
God, be with us in this time, even as we must remain separate. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There was the earth a formless void. In the beginning, darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Or was he in the beginning with God? In the beginning, we wait for the Lord to move, for the Spirit to blow, for the wind to breathe, as the beginning had already begun. The beginning of the beginning, yet unbegun, inaugurated by a word or a wish, a compulsion, or an insistence, an invitation. In the beginning, the beginning begins again. This is not the first beginning, and yet it is the beginning of something, something new. John's beginning begins again where the beginning started. What began with, let there be light, in the beginning God created. And yet, in the end, God creates. That's because the end is not the end. It's only the beginning. What a strange way for John to begin his gospel, right? I mean, it's, it's honestly kind of confusing. Like, I can't believe John didn't think that he might lose his audience speaking in riddles and poems and figures like that. But uh, have you ever wondered why? John chose to begin his story of Jesus where he did. Not at his beginning, but at the beginning. The beginning of all things. The beginning of Genesis 1, where God began. That's where John begins his story. We all recognize the words, in the beginning. And that's John's entire point. John begins his gospel with those three words so that we can recognize that John is intentionally connecting his story of Jesus to the beginning of all things. Which means at the very beginning of John's story, we know that by the end of the story, we will find a new beginning. You see, John's whole point is that this new thing that God did in Jesus Christ is actually the same old thing that God did in the beginning, creation. Which means that this story of the beginning begins twice. Once in the beginning and once in the tomb. So let's journey to the beginning of things and to the end of things. And let's find exactly what might be beginning today. We meet Mary Magdalene this morning, not at the beginning, but at the end. After Jesus had come and gone, after Jesus had been laid to rest, we have to do some imaginative work here to put ourselves in the place of the disciples as they do their best to interpret what is happening to them in real time. Their journey with Jesus began in Galilee as they followed an unknown rabbi who taught that God's kingdom is very different from the world's kingdom and that God's kingdom has drawn near. It has begun. The disciples followed this rabbi as he welcomed the strangers of the world, as he rebelled against the powerful and those who used their power to abuse and exploit the weak, as he spoke out against Caesar and Rome. They saw the kingdom Jesus spoke of, the one that was where all people are welcomed and treated equally, whether you're a slave, as he welcomes children and women into his presence. They watched as he went out of his way to find the blind, the lepers, the paralyzed, and carry them out of their darkness. They watched as Jesus prioritized the sick, the hungry, the naked, the imprisoned, the outcasts. Jesus didn't just talk about this kingdom as if it was some future reality. No, he lived the kingdom here as it broke out among the least of these. So the disciples spent three years living in this alternate reality. One where your worth is not determined by your place on a social ladder, but by your place in God's eyes. And they watched as this radical vision spread like wildfire through the hurting world. 
They watched their beloved friend become a symbol of hope and redemption for people of every nation as he led this beloved community of transformative resistance. They began to believe that they could do it too. And then we killed him. Just as soon as this vision for God's creation had begun to spread, it was cut off. Just as soon as the presence of God was felt among God's people, that presence was stripped away. How could this kingdom live on without Jesus? He was kind of the whole reason this movement started in the first place. This movement was beautiful, but it appears that we have reached the end. What are the people of God supposed to do now? These are the thoughts consuming Mary Magdalene on this, the morning of the third day since he was killed. All she wanted was to be with her friend again. All she wanted was to experience the connection and the intimacy that had been taken away from her. I'm sure all she wanted to do was hug her friend one more time. And yet this is it. All indicators appear to agree that this is the end. I think most years it's harder than we think to, to really understand what Mary is feeling in this moment. But this year is not most years. We too sit in the darkness of our homes, robbed of the connection that we once had to our loved ones. We too miss our friends and we do anything to hug them just one more time. Kara talked about having to tell the children, I'm sorry, I, I can't hug you not safe. We too woke up on this Easter morning grieving lost friends, lost time, lost jobs. For some of us, this year is the first time that we wake up on Easter morning feeling as if a part of us is missing. This year we don't have to pretend we understand what Mary is going through. This year we feel it. We tell ourselves that we're supposed to be happy because it's Easter. Instead of, instead of giving ourselves the space to mourn at the graveside of our communities and our hopes and our dreams. It's okay to grieve the tens of thousands across our world who have died from COVID-19. It's okay to grieve our loss of normalcy. It's okay to cry. Mary cried. We don't know why Mary went to the tomb that day. Perhaps she just wanted to be close to her friend again. But when she did, she saw the stone that sealed the tomb had been rolled away. And she immediately ran off to find the disciples and tell them. Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, the beloved disciple, run to the tomb to investigate only to find it exactly as Mary had described it. Inside the tomb, there was no body, only a pile of linens that once wrapped the body of Jesus. Peter was perplexed. The beloved disciple was perplexed. And yet, John tells us that he believed. But John also makes sure to tell us that neither one of them understood what that meant. So they just go home, confused and afraid, Unsure of what anything means anymore, but sure of one thing, it's over. We've reached the end of the story. There's nothing, nothing left to say. It appears all of our work has come to an end. Grief and heartache overflow as Mary sits alone and cries at the tomb of her friend. She looks inside but she sees something the other disciples did not see. She sees two angels. They ask her why she is weeping, and she responds out of the most genuine pain that may exist in the Gospels as she cries out, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. The last thing she thought she could hold on to had been taken away from. Her last hope of connectedness to her friend and her Savior was gone, all for no discernible reason. She turns around and sees the gardener, 
who appeared behind her. Maybe it was he who took her friend away. She begs for him to help her because her soul is being ripped from her body because of this uncertainty and pain. Jesus says to her, Mary. She turns and sees the one who was dead breathing again. The one who hung on the cross walking again. Her friend Jesus calling out to her again. Don't you see? Don't you see what's been happening all along? This is not a story of the end. This is a story of the beginning. The reason John begins his story with God's great act of creation is because God wasn't done creating then. The work of Jesus Christ was itself one of creation, where God entered the very creation that God created and continued the ever unfinished work of creating. Don't you see? God isn't done yet. The death of Jesus on the cross marks the end, but the resurrection on the third day reminds us that the end is not the end. It's only the beginning. The beginning of a new creation. The beginning of a new kingdom of the people of God here on earth. The beginning of life eternal. When we celebrate Easter, we celebrate the new beginning that was Jesus Christ. The new beginning that is still beginning. Jesus was the start of something new. Something that changed the world forever. Something that is still changing the world. When we celebrate Easter, we celebrate that the end is not the end. We celebrate that the death of Friday will not be the end of our story, but only the beginning. As with the resurrection of Jesus, we are raised with him to new life. We celebrate that God's great act of creation did not end on the sixth day, but continues to the third day because God's not done with creation yet. Mary finally embraces her friend again, but not for long. Jesus says, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. <clears throat> Jesus is somewhere else to be, but so does Mary. Her place is not at the tomb any more than Jesus' place is at the tomb, as they each have their own callings to fulfill that require them to go their separate ways. You see, in this moment, Jesus isn't the only one beginning again. Jesus isn't the only one participating with God in the great act of creation. Jesus tells Mary that her brush stroke is needed in this portrait. She is needed in the great unfolding of God's creativity. So she better stretch her creative muscles because it's time to begin. This intricately woven tapestry requires Mary's participation as much as it does Jesus's. So he tells her, don't hold me long. We both got places to be and things to begin. The illuminated truth of the resurrection is that Jesus Christ was not raised to mark the end, but to begin the beginning. A new creation that continues to this day. A new creation that is waiting for your touch, for your voice. I know this season of our lives that we will forever know as the season of coronavirus has taken a lot out of us. It's taken a lot from us, but it has also illuminated our desperate need, not for an end, but for a beginning. A new beginning where the church remembers its call to participate in God's continued act of creation. A new beginning where the church realizes that this is not the end. A new beginning where God speaks into the void, let there be life. The horrors of this pandemic have exposed the worst in humankind. But they have also exposed just how capable we are of fulfilling the mission of the church in different ways. How good we are at loving each other in new and exciting ways. How skilled we are at shining the light in the darkest of darkness. How willing we are to learn new steps as the rhythm changes and the pace quickens. How made we were for creating alongside our God as this new beginning begins. Friends, this pandemic will end, and we will begin again, but my question is this, why wait until then? Why wait until the world begins when the beginning has already begun? 
Why wait to join with God in creating the very joy and love and beauty that we are called to create and that sustains our life? Because let me tell you something, church. God would not have created you if you were not made for creation. Just as Mary was called to leave the tomb behind her, we are called to run from the empty tomb with trembling and joy to begin the work that God has called us to, living the resurrection life. You see, that's the thing about the resurrection life. It's not waiting for the other side of glory to begin. It already has begun, here and now. Resurrection life starts now. Don't wait for the next life to begin your new life in the Spirit, because life in the resurrection is beginning today. So friends, what are you waiting for? The Creator calls to His co-creators, the tomb is empty, so go. The Creator God has called you to join in creating a world of life, a world of light, where the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is hopeless against it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has no power apart from what the light grants it. So shine in the darkness. Shine the light that has shined from the beginning and will shine until the end. Because the truth is, church, the end is not the end. It's only the beginning. We only know this as a new beginning because Jesus Christ is alive and he lives. So friends, I invite you to sing with me our final hymn, hymn number 368, He Lives.
thankful that you were able to join us. I hope the Spirit has touched you in new and exciting ways as we continue to navigate this confusing terrain. But from all of us here at First CP Church, Happy Easter, and please receive this benediction. Friends, as you go about your day and your week and your life, let love be genuine. Return no person evil for evil, but hold fast to all that is good. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, give to all those in need. Show only love and compassion to all people, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit go with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.